Hello, welcome to Puffs and Poetry. I'm your host, Jessica, a writer, cannabis aficionado, and poetry lover. Today I have for you a selection of poems for troubled times, for these are indeed troubled times. Thanks for joining me today. Before I dive into the poems we're reading, let's pack a bowl and talk about what I'm smoking. In my grinder today, I have a blend that I made, a type two blend, which means it has CBD and THC in some kind of ratio. I did not pay attention to the exact ratio, but I combined CBD hemp flower and <laughs> a lavender herbal blend and THC flower, which comes in around 17%, I believe. This is a blend that I like a lot because it elevates me while keeping me grounded. It does not send me to the moon as some higher THC blends can. I am also smoking out of my Ongrok teardrop spoon pipe. And I like doing this for a smaller dosing size as well. So this is a smaller size, smaller milligram amount. It's a better way to say that with a blend of CBD, THC, and some added terpenes. Ouch, caught my thumb in the lighter on that one. So today I am reading from a book of poetry called The Soul is Here for Its Own Joy. And the description of the book is Sacred Poems from Many Cultures, edited by a man named Robert Bly. So this is one of my favorite books of poetry that I own, and I went through it and picked out some poems that stand out to me as relevant pieces for troubled times. This is not a book of Mary Oliver poetry. But in true Puffs and Poetry fashion, we are starting with a Mary Oliver poem. I can't resist. I love her. This one is called Maybe. Sweet Jesus, talking his melancholy madness, stood up in the boat and the sea lay down silky and sorry. So everybody was saved that night. But you know how it is when something different crosses the threshold. The uncles mutter together. The women walk away. The younger brother begins to sharpen his knife. Nobody knows what the soul is. It comes and goes like the wind over the water. Sometimes for days you don't think of it. Maybe after the sermon, after the multitude was fed, one or two of them felt the soul slip forth like a tremor of pure sunlight before exhaustion that wants to swallow everything gripped their bones and left them miserable and sleepy as they are now, forgetting how the wind tore at the sails before he rose and talked to it, tender and luminous and demanding as he always was, a thousand times more frightening than the killer sea. That is actually a Mary Oliver poem that did not make it into her book, Devotions, her selected works from her complete collection. So when I bought this book and I saw that poem, I got very excited for a new Mary Oliver poem. And I think it's beautifully stated. Our next poem is called The Wind, One Brilliant Day. The wind, one brilliant day, called to my soul with an odor of jasmine. In return for the odor of my jasmine, I'd like the odor of your roses. I have no roses. All the flowers in my garden are dead. 
Well, I'll take the withered petals and the yellow leaves and the waters of the fountain. The wind left and I wept. And I said to myself, what have you done with the garden that was entrusted to you? What indeed? I did not bring a water or a beverage out with me for this, which was short-sighted because now I have a microphone next to my mouth and I'm trying really hard not to clear my throat after smoking that bowl. Our next poem is called The Time Before Death and it is written by a Persian poet by the name of Kabir who was born in the very late 14th century. Persia was the ancient name for what is in modern day Iraq. Again, this is The Time Before Death by Kabir. Friend, hope for the guest while you are alive. Jump into experience while you are alive. Think and think while you are alive. What you call salvation belongs to the time before death. If you don't break your ropes while you're alive, do you think ghosts will do it after? The idea that the soul will join with the ecstatic just because the body is rotten, that is all fantasy. What is found now is found then. If you find nothing now, you will simply end up with an apartment in the city of death. If you make love with the divine now, in the next life, you will have the face of satisfied desire. So plunge into the truth. Find out who the teacher is. Believe in the great sound. Kabir says this. When the guest is being searched for, it is the intensity of the longing for the guest that does all the work. Look at me and you will see a slave of that intensity. Obviously Kabir's poems are very old and translated um, because they were not originally written in English. And when I read a translated poem, I always wonder how much of it is a literal translation word for word and how much of it is a poetic translation? How much license did the translator take? Kabir's poems have a tendency at the end to repeat the line, Kabir says this, which I just find interesting and a little linguistically awkward in English. And I, and I wonder what it was like when it was written originally. But there are a few lines in this poem that stand out to me beautifully. What you call salvation belongs to the time before death. If you don't break your ropes while you're alive, do you think ghosts will do it after? The idea that the soul will join with the ecstatic just because the body is rotten, that is all fantasy. What is found now is found then. Those lines stay with me. Sometimes they just pop into my head. Our next poem today, which is also our last poem, is also by Kabir, and it's called Breath. I have been, before I dive into this, I have been meditating with some regularity for the past three and a half years. Not every day, certainly, and sometimes only about once a week, but it is a practice that I keep coming back to, and it is a practice that has served me well over the years. It is an incredibly challenging thing to sit in stillness for 10 
15, especially 20 minutes. But even on the days when I don't want to do it and I force myself to do it and it's really hard the entire time I'm doing it, I always leave feeling better. And so that is what I was thinking when I selected the last poem. Called Breath by Kabir. Are you looking for me? I am in the next seat. My shoulder is against yours. You will not find me in the stupas, not in Indian shrine rooms, nor in synagogues, nor in cathedrals. Not in masses, nor in curtains, not in legs winding around your own neck, nor, eat it, nor in eating nothing but vegetables. When you really look for me, you will see me instantly. You will find me in the tiniest house of time. Kabir says, student, tell me, what is God? He is the breath inside the breath. There is one meditation track in particular that I've been listening to by Ram Das on Spotify this year. It will absolutely be in my Spotify top songs. Um, but I got really unwell the other night and I was just in hysterics, you know, the way that you can be when everything is, is not okay. And in trying to help me, my partner put on that meditation. And it was so funny how even though I still felt unwell, I was incredibly nauseous. My body had such a physiological response to that meditation because I have sat and breathed with it so many times this year. And even though I still felt terrible and it was a really long night, um, that pause, that meditative pause took me out of hysterics in a moment where I did not see any other means of calming down. So that is just a thought I want to leave you with, that God is the breath within the breath. These are scary and heartbreaking times. We have never before been so connected to the amount of tragedy going on in our world from so many different angles, all locations. So, when it feels like you can't do anything else, remember to breathe. Everything starts there. Those are all the poems that I have for you today. Thank you for spending some time with me and with poetry. I think it is a nice breath of pause. Be kind to yourself, be kind to others, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>